I'd like to welcome everyone uh, this morning on this very auspicious day of the appearance of um, Lord Nityananda, who's standing very regally, very beautiful, here on our altar, on the left. We'll begin um, by reading a verse from uh, Chaitanya Charitamrita, Adi Lila, Volume 1. This will be uh, actually text one of Chapter 5. Jaya Jaya Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Dvaita Chandra Jaya Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Jaya Jaya Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Dvaita Chandra Jaya Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Jaya Jaya Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Jaya Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Jaya Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Dvaita Chandra Jaya Go Bhakta Vrinda Bande Nantad Bhutaisvaryam Sri Nityanandam Ishvaram Yashe Chayatat Shwarupam Ajnain Pi Nripa Yayate <coughs> Let me offer my obeisances to Lord Sri Nityananda, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, whose opulence is wonderful and unlimited. By his will, even a fool can understand his identity. There's no purport to this particular verse, but I thought it was very pertinent, very relevant uh, for today's lecture. Omagyan timadandasya genan gena shalakaya chaksuni militam jena tasmai si gudavena maha shri chaitanya mano vishdam stapitam jena bhutale shwayam rupa kadamaya dadanti svahat Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasari Gaur Bhakti Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 <coughs> You please excuse me, I have a little cold, but um, I'll do my best. <coughs> so in this verse we hear some of the uh, unlimited glories of um, Lord Nityananda. In each age, the Lord uh, appears to propagate, or you could say, establish religious principles. Dhamantu Sakrat Bhagavatam Pranitam. But for the Lord, no one else can introduce a process of religion. And generally, when He comes, as we know, we have our Das avatars, etc., He comes in a singular form, like Matsya, like Kurma. Uh, Nishringa, Rama, or even the Lord Himself, Sri Bhagavan, He comes as Sri Krishna here to Sri Vrindavan Dham. But it's very interesting because in this age, in Kali Yuga, the Lord actually comes in five different forms. <laughs> it's the only age in which He comes in uh, a multitude of forms. It's a bit um, esoteric, uh, even to learned, you could say, or experienced devotees of the Lord. Of course, the Maya Pravasis, they're very learned in this, but what are the five forms that Krishna comes in this age to propagate dharma, specifically the chanting of the holy names? Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama, Hare Rama. Well, he comes as a devotee. He comes as an expansion. He comes as an incarnation. He comes as his uh, internal potency. And he comes as his marginal energy. I told you it's a little esoteric. Uh, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is the devotee incarnation. God doesn't appear as God in the Kali Yuga because people would just want to imitate him. They want to become God, so that wouldn't be relevant. So he comes as a devotee to teach us the process of becoming God conscious. This is Lord Chaitanya. Lord Nityananda, 
whose appearance day it is today, he's the expansion of the Lord. Advaita Acharya is the incarnation of the Lord, and Sri Gadadhar is his internal potency, Ladini Shakti, Vrindavaneshwari, Srimati Radharani. And Sri Vasatakur is the marginal energy of the Lord. So we chant Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Advaita Gadadhar Sri Vasanagor. Five expansions. So this morning we'll be focusing on Lord Nityananda, an expansion of Krishna, because today it's his birthday, or we better to say his appearance day. Now one of Krishna's opulences, he has many opulences, is that he can uh, expand into many forms for different purposes. This is his mystic power. Krishna is mystic power, he's Yogeshwara. And Krishna himself refers to this very special uh, <coughs> mystic power of his in uh, chapter 11, uh, verse 8 of the Bhagavad Gita. He says, to, to Arjuna, Natu mam shakshise dushtam ane vaiva svachakshusha divyam dadami te chakshu pashame yogam aishvaryam. It's a famous verse. But you cannot see me with your present eyes, Arjuna. Therefore, I give you divine eyes. Behold my mystic opulence. One of those opulences he can reveal himself to his devotee. Yogesh Aishwaram, this, he calls this his inconceivable mystic power. So therefore he's known as Yogeshwara, master of mystic powers. Because uh, yogis, being part and parcel of the Lord, having the same qualities but in minute form, all of us have the same qualities of the Lord but in very minute ways, a yogi can also expand himself uh, up to twelve forms only. But Krishna can expand himself into unlimited forms. Unlimited forms. Another difference is that, that yogi, when he expands himself, uh, all twelve forms look the same and they do the same thing at the same time. <laughs> A yogi will expand into twelve forms for whatever reason. But each form um, does the same thing at the same time. But Krishna's unlimited forms can do many things at the same time. It's amazing. Therefore he says, Pashyamam Yogam Aishvaram. Behold my mystic opulence. When I expand into unlimited forms, they're all doing various things for various purposes, especially in this world. So, Krishna's very first expansion is actually Lord Balaram, who we see on the center altar here, Krishna Balaram. Balaram is the first expansion of Krishna, and actually, being the first expansion of Krishna, there's hardly any difference between Krishna and Balaram, Prabhupada said. Sometimes we refer to them in a singular way, the Supreme Personality of God. We're talking about two personalities, Krishna and Balaram, but um, we refer to them in a singular form, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Krishna and Balaram. Because the only difference is that Krishna is bluish black like a monsoon cloud, and Balaram is uh, white like an autumn cloud. If you look at them, those who are sitting in the middle. Krishna is bluish black like a monsoon cloud, and Balaram's uh, white like an autumn cloud. Nevertheless, because Balaram is an expansion, he's considered subservient. Krishna is the original personality of Godhead. And he expands for various purposes. So everyone is subservient to the Lord. So Balaram also considers himself a servant of Krishna. And how does he serve Krishna? Well, in a variety of ways. Actually, he expands. Balaram expands as Krishna's staff, as Krishna's umbrella, as Krishna's shoes, as Krishna's bed. And actually, Balaram, he expands as Vrindavan Dham. The Dham is an expansion of Lord Balaram. So it sounds a little curious, He's the umbrella, the staff, the shoes. But bear in mind that here in Sri Vrindavan Dham, everything is personal. Everything is personal. Every, everyone has a personal loving relationship with Sri Krishna. 
So the umbrella, the shoes, the bed, they're all divine. They're all uh, conscious. <laughs> but Balaram actually has another relationship with Krishna, and that's because, well, he was born first, a little bit before Krishna, so he's like Dauji. Dauji means he's, he's elder brother. So the elder brother in the family, you know, he's in charge of you know, his sisters and all, all his younger brothers, they also look up to the older brother, and older brother is very protective. So one of Balaram's sevas or services to Krishna as his first expansion, he's very protective. And we see when we read the tenth canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, how many times Balaram intervenes and protects Krishna or assists Krishna in killing our various demons. These are very wonderful pastimes. So much so that Prabhupada uh, made Krishna and Balaram the center of our Krishna Balaram Mandir here. Also because this is Raman Reti, and Raman Reti is famous for its sand. It's, this is a very sandy part of, of Vrindavan. You'll have rocky parts of Vrindavan, like out at Govardhan Hill. You'll have muddy parts here. But this is a sandy area, so the cowherd boys, they like to come here and wrestle with Krishna and Balaram in the sands of Raman Reti. So another reason that Prabhupada established in the center fold here, um, Krishna and, and Balaram. And being uh, essentially uh, brothers, they're both under the care of uh, Nanda Maharaj, um, Krishna and Balaram, sometimes they incarnate together. Whenever there's a need to come to the material world, Krishna and Balaram come together and they do their pastimes together because there's a saying, blood is thicker than water. So family ties are very strong. So Krishna and Balaram come together. And uh, in Treta Yuga, they came together as Ram Lakshman. And in Dapura Yuga, they came together as Krishna Balaram. And in this age, dear devotees, this age, they come as Gornitai. Srila <laughs> Narottam Das Thakur writes, Prajanda Nandana She Sachi Sutta Holo Se Balaram Holo Nitai. Lord Krishna, the, uh, the prince of Braja, has appeared as Lord Chaitanya, the son of Sachi Devi, and Balaram, he's appeared as Nitai. And Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami, um, he very uh, poetically describes this wonderful phenomena that these two brothers appear in different ages together. And as far as they're appearing together in the Kali Yuga, he says, very famous verse, Bande Shri Krishna Chaitanya Nityananda Sahodito Bhodadhaya Pushpavanto Chittashando Tamo Ludu I offer my respectful obeisances unto Lord Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda who are like the sun and the moon they have arisen simultaneously. You think of the sun and the moon rising <laughs> simultaneously. On the horizon of Goda, Goda means eastern India, uh, specifically Bengal. For what purpose? Why, why have they come? To dissipate the darkness of ignorance and thus wonderfully bestow benediction upon all. And just as Lakshman assisted Ram, in his pastimes in Treta Yuga, there's so many pastimes there in the uh, Ramayana, where Lakshman, uh, originally Balaram, assists Ram, originally Krishna, and Lord Balaram assisted uh, Krishna in the previous age, the Pura Yuga. So, Lord Nityananda, he assists um, Krishna in his pastimes in Kali Yuga. However, there's a special quality to Lord Nityananda's service to Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu that doesn't exist in Ram or Krishna's pastimes. There's a special quality to Nitai's service that you don't find in Ram Leela, you don't find in Krishna Leela. So what could that be? Well, this is nicely described by Baladev Bhijabhushana. He says that when Krishna and Ram come to the earth, they enjoy uh, pastimes of love with their devotees. When they come to this world, actually, when the Lord comes to this world, He brings the spiritual world with Him. He brings His associates with Him. 
And they all engage in wonderful transcendental pastimes, which are recorded. They're actually recorded, they're actually written down. But they don't invite other devotees to, at that moment, participate in those pastimes, generally. It's something like, you could say, they're performing like a, a, a transcendental theater. You know, you go to the theater and then, you know, the theater is portraying something that's perhaps had, had historically happened somewhere else, but when you go to that theater, you become very enlivened, you come out, you're talking about it. So they perform these different pastimes, we read about them, they're written down by great devotees, and um, it's to attract the conditioned souls, to take up the process of devotional service. But in Gaur-lila, gaur they invite the conditioned souls into the very pastimes, or onto the stage, you could say. And what pastimes? They're Sankirtan pastimes. Chanting and dancing the holy names together. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama. Like Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he's inviting the conditioned souls not to just watch, but you come with me in congregational chanting. Krishna Varnam Tusha Krishnam Shango Panga Shaparshadam Yagnai Sankirtan Payar Ishantihi Shu Merishaha. This is where we find the identity of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He's not one of the Das avatars, he's a very special incarnation in the age of Kali. Usually, Krishna is called Tri. Tree Ganakala, he only comes in three ages. Krishna doesn't come in Kali Yuga, but he comes in a hidden form, Chana Avatar, and he chants the holy names, and he invites everyone, come chant with me. When Mahaprabhu was going through the, the area of Nadia, in, in the morning he'd go out on Harinam Sankirtan, and they were inviting everyone, you come, come on the stage, experience the bliss of chanting, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, and it's still going on. It's still going on. It said the Sankirtan movement established by Lord Chaitanya, meaning the chanting of Hare Krishna as the Yuga Dharma, the means for becoming spiritually enlightened, the, the means for becoming a, a divine lover of God, the Yuga Dharma, it goes on for 10,000 years. So it's not just something we watch, but come. You, we pull people into the care time. <laughs> the proof of the puddings in the eating. Chant with us. So this is the difference. Therefore, Gornitai are considered the most merciful incarnations. And in this regard it's said that uh, by, by doing this, by establishing this Yuga Dharma of chanting Hare Krishna, Mahaprabhu, he broke open the storehouse of love of God. And Lord Nityananda specifically was the chief distributor of that mercy. Therefore, Naratam Dastakuri says, Nitai para kamalam koti chanda shushitala, ye jai jaya jagat juraya. The lotus feet of Lord Nityananda are like the cool moonlight of a million moons, under whose shelter everyone can find relief from the blazing fire of material suffering. So, in this way, we can appreciate today that Lord Nityananda is a very, very, very special incarnation. In fact, in uh, Chaitanya Bhagwat, Vrindavan Das Thakur, he glorifies Lord Nityananda by saying that he's Tattva Simha. Tattva Simha, there's different interpretations in Sanskrit, but Tattva Simha means that he is um, the very limit of absolute truth. Uh, Vrindavan Das Thakur says he's Purna Shakti. Nita is Purna Shakti. He's the total potency of God. And he's Shesha Vigraha. He's the embodiment of seva, of service, and Murti Mana Krishna Prem. Murti Mana Krishna Prem. He's the very embodiment of love of God. This is Arunitai. <laughs> we can say like that because sometimes Sri Papa, when he was speaking about Krishna, he would say, Our Krishna. <laughs> By Prabhupada's grace. <laughs> he, one time Prabhupada said, Here's Krishna, take him. So it's our Krishna by the mercy of His Divine Grace, Srila Prabhupada. So we can say our Nitai. In fact, it was Prabhupada who installed these deities. So there are, this is our ashram, this is our temple. And although there's many uh, holy places here in Praj, 
Actually, my dear godmother, Srivaram Swami, he writes in one of his books that there's 60 million, 60 million holy places in Braj. We still consider this the most sacred place because here we have the Samadhi of Srila Prabhupada. So for us, this is the most sacred place in creation. Now, historically, uh, Lord Nityananda appeared as the son of Hadai Pandit and mother Padmavati in the village of Ekachakra in the year uh, 1473. And actually, um, Hadai Pandit and Padmavati, they'd had, uh, they were not able to conceive a child after they were married. But one night a great sage appeared in, in, in a dream to mother Padmavati and said, do not worry, you will soon have as your son a Mahapurusha, possessing unlimited Shakti, who will in his lifetime deliver thousands of sinners from bondage. You can imagine, ladies, if you had, <laughs> if you had a dream and a sadhu made this prediction, that you'll, you'll have a son who's a Mahapurusha, means a great soul, he'll, he'll have unlimited Shakti, and in his lifetime, he'll deliver thousands of sinners, uh, sinners from bondage. Actually, when Sridhar Prabhupada appeared in this world, they, mother and father, they called an astrologer. And they made many wonderful predictions about Sridhar Prabhupada as well. One of them was that one day he'll open up 108 centers of Krishna consciousness around the world. And so indeed, it came to pass. Now, after his birth, it was seen that this Nitai, because you know babies are babies, but in, in the case of these Mahapurushas, these great souls, we'd see some differences. That, Like for example, one day Nitai was playing with his childhood friends and they were playing Ramayan. And um, he fell unconscious um, because someone had, you know, a Ravana side had shot an arrow at him. And he was only revived in one of the boys playing Hanuman, if you know the story. Ramayan. He brought Sanjeevani uh, root to, uh, to Nitai, and Nitai woke up. <laughs> so he was, someone shot him with an arrow, but he woke up, he was conscious because of these Sanjeevani. This is a pastime from Ramayan. It was reenacted in reality when the boys were playing. So they could see this, he's special. And when he was uh, 12 years old, that's when uh, Lord Chaitanya appeared in Navadweep. There's a difference of 12 years between Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Nityananda. So again, we see Nitai, who's an expansion of Balaram. He's older. He's older than Krishna. He's older than Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So, uh, when, when, when Nitai heard this, it's described, he, he roared so loud that he made the entire universe unconscious for a few moments. Haribol! He ran <laughs> and it just made the whole universe a <laughs> so special boy. So he was thinking yeah, that how will I ever leave this Eka Chakra and join Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu? Because again, they came as a pair, not singular, but as a pair, or five features, let us say, to establish the process of self realization for this age. So he's thinking, how am I going to get out of here? and join Lord Chaitanya. My mother and father have so much affection for me. But one day, a very, it's described, a tall sannyasi, very tall sannyasi, came to the house of a Dai Pandit. And when a sannyasi comes to your home, a saintly person comes to your home, um, he comes not, the only purpose he comes is to share his spiritual realizations with the family. But he may come on the pretext, can I have some milk or, you know, I'm hungry, can you give me something to eat? And they invite him in. His real purpose is to share Krishna consciousness with the, with the householders. And in reciprocation, the householders, they give some dhan, they give some charity, some gift to the saintly person. And actually, the tradition is that the sannyasi can ask anything he wants. <laughs> Now, if he's a real sannyasi, he'll actually, he won't ask for, you know, something. He'll just ask them, please chant Hare Krishna. But in this case, the lila is that when this sannyasi came, the uh, mother and father said, what, what can we give you for coming? So he said, your son. <laughs> you give me your son. Nitai. 
So they already realize that he's a special personality. And of course, mothers and fathers are attached to their children. You can see this is a difficulty. But somehow or other, Hadai Pandit, because this is Vedic culture, if you follow Vedic culture, though sometimes it may be a little bit difficult, the results are always divine. So he consented. But mother, Padmavati, she said, please don't take my life from me. Mothers can understand this, those of you who He said, don't, don't take my life from me. So understanding this, this sannyasi, he had a bag, and in the bag he had a murti. He had a deity. The name of that deity was uh, Murlidar. So he gave this deity to uh, Mother Padmavati. And he said, he will fulfill all your desires. So let us remember the deity is not different than the Lord. The young Brahmana boy, when he came to Vrindavan to ask Shakshi Gopal to <coughs> come with him to stand as witness in, uh, in Orissa, he said something very famous. He said, my Lord, you are not a statue. You are directly the son of Maharaj Nanda. Please come with me. So the deity replied to the boy, the deity is a person, he can reply to the pure devotee. He said, but how will I follow you to Arissa? I, I'm a deity, I can't walk. So the boy is a Brahmin, he's very intelligent. He said, Lord, if you can talk, you can walk. <laughs> so they made a little agreement and the Lord followed the boy to Arissa like this. So the deity is fully Krishna. I often say in deity worship, the golden rule, because there are many rules in deity worship, the golden rule is to always remember the deity is a person. And then you'll fulfill all the other rules and regulations. Just remember the deity is a person. He's the supreme personality of Godhead. And then your deity worship will flow very naturally. So he took this deity out of the bag and gave it to her. He will fulfill all your desires. In fact, he said something very amazing. He said, if you worship the de deity nicely, you'll see your own son in the deity. You'll see your own son in the deity. So Mother Padmavati, she took the deity and it's described, well, looking at him with loving eyes, she saw the face of her son in the deity. <laughs> Krishna consciousness is very mystical. It's transcendental. It's wonderful. It's what we're all looking for. So at that point, seeing her, the, the face of her son in the deity, Shantushti. Shantushti means that she was fully satisfied. If you experience Krishna, you can be fully satisfied. So how do we in Kali Yuga most easily accept, how is Krishna accessible to all of us? Namaj Chintamani Krishna's Chaitanya Rasa Vigraha in the form of his name. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama. <laughs> you can also become Santushti, you can have this experience like Prabhupada put it very poetically, when you're chanting Hare Krishna, the Lord is dancing on your tongue. So we have the same opportunity. So then she said, you can take him. <laughs> so the sannyasi, this, he took Nitai as a, you know, a, a servant. But after some time, uh, it, the, the sannyasi disappeared. B but Nitai kept traveling. He kept traveling. Not footloose and fancy free, but for the purpose of showing us how to become Krishna conscious by visiting so many holy dhams. When we come to India, we go to the variety of dhams, there's a special mood in every dham. Vrindavan, Mayapur, Puri, Sri Rangam, all these different dhams. Our favorite dham, of course, is Vrindavan and Mayapur. But devotees visit other dhams out of curiosity to see the bhakti, the devotion, and the, the, the devotees who live there. So Nitai set us an example. He started traveling. And I was reading in Bhakti Ratnakara that while visiting uh, Pandarpur, Nitai met um, the guru of uh, Madhavinda Puri, <coughs> who was Lakshmi Pati. And although he's the Supreme Personality of Godhead, he set the example of taking initiation from a spiritual master. Tadvidi paripatena paripashana sevaya upatekshanti teganam ganinas tatvadarshana. It's one of the 
700 verses of Bhagavad Gita, <coughs> that one should um, take initiation. So the Lord, excuse me, the Lord, he set the example, he took initiation from um, Lakshmi Pati. And when he did, he became mad with Krishna consciousness, just like Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. After accepting initiation from Ishwara Puri, he also became mad. They took initiation into what? Srinam, the holy name, again the Yuga Dharma. And that's important because anyone can benefit from chanting Hare Krishna. Even if you just pass a kirtan party on the street, you're, on your, you're just a businessman, you're not a devotee, you hear the chanting. <coughs> that chanting, <coughs> the holy name is so powerful that it, just by hearing it, it removes lifetimes of sinful activities, of karma from your heart. And just hearing the holy names of Krishna can uh, uh, uproot your material desires. But if you want the goal of chanting Hare Krishna, which is praying, which is love for Radhe Sham, you have to be blessed by getting that mantra in uh, 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 disciplic succession of spiritual teachers. If you take that, at the moment of initiation, you're getting blessed to chant Hare Krishna, you can achieve Prem. So Nitai set the example, and he be, as a result, he experienced this Prem, just like Mahaprabhu when he took initiation from uh, Ishwari Puri and Gaya, the same thing happened. So Nitai started traveling for a number of years. And eventually, he came to Navadweep. He came to Navadweep, near to where he, was, where he appeared in Eka Chakra. And his reason in coming was to meet his brother, his transcendental brother. So Vrindavan Das Thakur describes it on the way to Navadweep. After years of traveling, he, now he's finally coming to meet Lord Chaitanya, the two of them are going to get together and start distributing the, the mercy in earnest. <coughs> he was very much, uh, he was in ecstasy, anticipating uh, meeting Lord Chaitanya. Uh, Vrindavan Das Thakur writes that uh, uh, as he was approaching Navadweep, he was intoxicated with Gora Prem, and he was swinging to and fro like a mad elephant. You know, like when you're going to meet your you go back home to meet your mom or your dad or your, your wife or something, you've been away. You know, you're excited. But this is divine love. This is prema. This is something different. As a result, he's intoxicated with Gora Prem. And on the way, just in your mind's eye, see, he's swinging to and fro like a mad elephant. And sometimes he wept and sometimes he cried. And sometimes he just laughed like a madman. And being an avadut, an avaduta. On the way, he wore a blue dhoti, tulsi beads and rudraksha beads around his neck. And he was wearing a big earring in one ear, Vindavan Das Thakur describes, you know. And ankle bells on his feet. Hmm. You see sadhus like that, ankle bells and big earrings, and, you know. Rudraksha, tulsi, blue <laughs> He's a special personality. He wanted people to be attracted to him because Krishna is, in all his forms, the most attractive personality in all the three worlds. So arriving in Navadweep, where Mahaprabhu was, he came to the house of uh, Nandan Acharya. And that night, he's sleeping there in Nandan Acharya's house, Lord Chaitanya had a dream. And in the dream, he dreamed about Nitai. And he woke in the morning. When he woke up in the morning, he was in the mood of Balaram. He took on the mood of Balaram. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he woke up in the mood of Balaram and he said to his servant who was Srivast Pandit, bring me my liquors. Like, meaning like Baruni beverage. You know, Balaram, it's a whole pastime, but you know, 5,000 years ago, part of his pastimes, he gets intoxicated by drinking honey. So in the mood of Balaram, uh, Mahaprabhu says to, to Srivast Pandit, bring me my liquors. Now, Shiva's Pandit, who's aware of everything that's happening because he's fully enlightened, he said something very interesting. Kind of my favorite, one of my favorite parts. He said, my Lord, you have those liquors in the form of love of God. And you're already distributing them to others in the form of 
हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम <laughs> you're already intoxicated by chanting the holy name <laughs> like we used to you know in the early days we say stay high forever by chanting hari krishna <laughs> it's not artificial it's natural so at that point lord chaitanya he said to Sh- to shrivas uh, but to distribute that krishna prem i require an itai <laughs> so nice that it's building up the past time you know make a perfect movie to to distribute krishna prem i need nitai so he um he asked hari rash takur and shrivas pandit he's here he's somewhere in navadweep you find him so shrivas pandit and uh and uh, hari rash takur great devotees they went all around navadweep he said have you seen nitai who nityananda who nobody knew but Vrindavan Das Thakur says in Chaitanya Bhagavat, Bhara Guda Nityananda Tattva E Avatari, Chaitanya Dikaya Jare Se Dukite Pare. He alone can see him who Lord Chaitanya allows. These things are, there are revelations in Krishna consciousness. Revelations, we make gradual progress, then spiritual masters or acharyas, as we're qualified, then they give the revelations. Work now, samadhi later. By serving, by purification, um, then we're blessed with revelations. So he alone can see him who Lord Chaitanya allows. <laughs> so they couldn't find, they came back empty handed. Then Mahaprabhu himself went with his associates straight to the house of Nanda Nacharya. And he walked in, and there was Nitai. And you know, you always see in the movies, the love movies, you know, they. The girl runs and jumps in the arms of the boy. It's all a perverted reflection. You can just imagine what this meeting was like. <laughs> what it was like that when, when Mahaprabhu walked into the house of Nanda Acharya and there's Nitai, he'd come to see Mahaprabhu. It's, it's hard to put into words. They just ran and they just embraced each other in a flood of prema until they both fell unconscious on the ground. They just fell unconscious on the ground. They're not moving. They're unconscious. So at that time, Gadadhar Pandit, in order to uh, revive the two brothers, he recited the following verse from Srimad Bhagavatam, 10, uh, 21.5. Because remember that, well, let us say that when Mahaprabhu came to this world, he came for two purposes. He came to... Um, introduced the Yuga Dharma of chanting Hare Krishna and Krishna had his own special reason. He wanted to come as a devotee in the mood of Radharani to understand Radharani's love for Krishna. It's a whole other talk. It's quite deep. It's quite esoteric. So that's Braj. So in order to um, revive them, Gadadhar Pandit, who <laughs> he's the internal energy, he's Radharani, he spoke a verse from the Bhagavatam to, to wake them up. And what, what is that verse? Wearing a peacock feather ornament on his head, blue karnikara flowers on his ears, a yellow garment as brilliant as gold, and a Vajayanti garland, Lord Krishna exhibited his transcendental form as the greatest of dancers, as he entered the forest of Vrindavan, beautifying it with the marks of his footprints. He filled the holes of his flute with the nectar of his lips, and the cowherd boys sang his glories. Hearing this verse, the, uh, just a tidbit you could say of the glories of this wonderful Vrindavan Dham, the Leelas of Radha and Krishna, they woke up. <laughs> that, you could splash water on them, you could shake them, but what woke them up was this particular verse. They became consciousness. Now, when the devotees saw this, the two brothers had finally met and they, they fell down in ecstasy and they were revived by the nectar of Braj Leela. Everyone w- just stood silent. You could hear a pin drop. <laughs> They'd, everyone was like, wow, what's happening? So then Mahaprabhu himself, he requested Srivast to, to break this silence by making um, uh, the deep personality of Lord Nityananda manifest. Like, who is this Nitai? 
So Srivas, he sang another verse from Srimad Bhagavatam about Balaram. <laughs> Balaram and Krishna coming back to the forest, or coming back from the forest to the town of Vrindavan. And hearing this verse about his pastimes in Vrindavan, Nitai fainted again and only came back to external consciousness when the devotees chanted very loudly, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna, Now seeing this, experiencing all this, you know, that now, he's, now Krishna's met Balaram, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's met Nitai, they're coming together, the Sankirtan movement's going to start in earnest. Mahaprabhu, from his heart, from his mouth, he said something very sweet, very sweet. He said to Nitai, I searched the whole world over, but I could not find you. Now I have found the thief who has stolen my heart. Now I will never let you go. <laughs> I searched the whole world over, but I couldn't find you. Now I have found the thief that's stolen my heart. Nitai has stolen the heart of Mahaprabhu. Now I'll never let you go. These are the deep uh, transcendental relationships that actually we're all hankering for. It's, it's love, which is expressed in different relationships and friendships and servitorship, parentalhood, conjugal love. So there's a demonstration. Mahaprabhu is just showing how much he loves Nitai. So it's at that point that I was mentioning the Sankirtan movement began in earnest. And how did it, how did it go? How did, how did the Sankirtan movement evolve? Well, it, by reading Chaitanya Charitamrita, Chaitanya Bhagwat, and uh, reading uh, uh, the, the prayers of devotees like Prabodhananda Saraswati, Chaitanya Chandamrita, etc., we can understand that Lord Chaitanya focused on the elite. He, fo he focused on the elite. He preached to Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya. He preached to Prakashananda Saraswati, the head of the Mayavadi school. He preached to learned Brahmanas. But Nitai, <coughs> nit, 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 Mahaprabhu sent him out to distribute to the mass of people. To actually, to even rogues and dacoits and fallen people. And his partner in Sankirtan <laughs> was Haridash Thakur. You know, we, we realize, we think of Haridash Thakur in Puri, you know, under that, uh, the tree, Siddhabhakul, chanting, chanting, chanting. But there was a period in his life where he set an example for all of us. He shared his good fortune with others. He went out door to door. Now, those of you who have done Sankirtan, you know what it's like to go door to door. You don't know what you're going to get. <laughs> you knock on the door and you don't know what's going to happen. One time I, I did Sankirtan, I opened the door and phew, a punch came. I just ducked it. I said, bye-bye. But sometimes you meet favorable people. So this is a risk. Devotees take a risk. So Lord Nityananda and Haridash Thakur, they went door to door in Navadweep. But Navadweep's the spiritual abode. Well, at that time, it was basically a seat of learning where all different smartas would come and people would come. There was hardly any talk of Krishna consciousness. It's just the historical fact at that time until Mahaprabhu appeared. It's always a dawn, but it was covered a little bit. So they went out and they went door-to-door -door preaching. And many times it's described uh, in Chaitanya Bhagavat, or it's actually described by Lokchan Das Thakur in one of his poems, that they went door-to-door -door and they would, uh, the person would open the door, I'm not interested. So Nitai said, if you don't chant Hare Krishna, I'm going to come in your house, roll around, break all the furniture until you do. <laughs> and many times that's what he did. He would <laughs> he'd roll around, break all the furniture. Okay, Hare Krishna! <laughs> but part of the problem was that Nitai would sometimes uh, 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 go into the mood of Balaram, and when all the ladies in the family would come to the door, he'd see them as gopis. He'd <laughs> say, let's dance together. So Haridash Thakur is like, wait a minute, don't be bothered, I'm your Nitai, it's a different age now, please. <laughs> and actually, uh, Haridash Thakur, when they would go back to give the Sankirtan scores, I'm just paraphrasing, <laughs> he'd say to, to, to Mahaprabhu, Mahaprabhu, I, I don't want to go out with him anymore, he's intoxicated with love of God. He said specifically, he jumps in the Ganga 
and chases crocodiles. <laughs> Nitai. He rides a bull shouting, I am Shiva. He plunders the cow herds, uh, the, the, the cow sheds of the farmers and eats all their yogurt. He embraces young girls and asks them to dance with him for a night like Balaam. Please give me another Sankatan partner. <laughs> but nevertheless, knowing the potency of these two personalities, Mapa was said, no, you go together. And, and actually, the, the, this, the, the pair, Nitai and Haridas Thakur, they demonstrated by their preaching the highest quality of a devotee in our Vaishnav, Gaudiya Vaishnav tradition, which is compassion. Compassion for what? Compassion for the fallen souls. Not by distributing, distributing medicine and getting new housing for people and this and that, but by giving them the ultimate solution to all problems in this world. They would encourage people, chant Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Hare. Because all problems are solved when you go back home, back to Godhead. So, this is a Vaishnava. Vaishnava means one who shares his good fortune with others. Just as Jesus Christ said, it's better to give than it is to receive. And in his purports, I was reading uh, the other day, Sri Chaitanya Shikshamrita. Uh, in his purports to Sri Chaitanya Shikshamrita, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur writes, this is very relevant. In the teachings of Sriman Mahaprabhu, there are only two principal instructions. Develop namruchi, a taste for chanting the holy names, and display compassion for the fallen souls. Isn't that wonderful? You know, we're summarizing here. Eloquence is truth spoken concisely. Bhaktisana Saraswati Thakur said, in the teachings of Lord Chaitanya, which are vast, there's only two principal instructions. Develop a taste for chanting the holy names and display compassion for the fallen souls. So if you're Gaur Bhakta, actually technically we're Gaur Bhaktas. We're Gaur Bhaktas because only by the mercy of Gauranga can we understand what is Radha Krishna. Technically we're Gaur Bhaktas. So we'd have to take this to heart. We have to, our main business is chanting Hare Krishna. And in our own way, to each his own, somehow helping the spread of the Sankatam movement. This was Prabhupada's mood. Who is Prabhupada in the spiritual world? We can't speculate. Whoever he, he came here, what did he do? He preached Krishna consciousness. As did the Lord in the form of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So like father, like son, we can <coughs> contribute. You know, some can go out, there can be festivals, you can cook for the Sankatam vote, you can invite sadhus into your home, you go on the internet, but do something. <laughs> like if you love someone, they say prove it. So we want to develop love for the divine couple, for Krishna Bala and for Braj. We'll do something for the present avatar. Because Prabhupada said one time, when many instructions are given, the last instruction is the most important. So, so many incarnations have come to this world. So many. But the most recent is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And he encouraged his devotees to spread the Sangatam movement all over the world by the mass chanting of Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. The authorities gave me a few extra minutes, I think, until uh, 9.15. I think the temple president said 9.30. No? <laughs> or Damodar, or what's his name? Can I go on to 9.15? Oh, I can't go to 10. I have a yoga group. Who's the yoga group? Raise your hands if you're from the yoga, yoga group, the Westerners. Raise your hands. We're going to Biharavan today. Take <laughs> some. So in this mood of sharing Krishna consciousness uh, to, to the mass of people and to show the potency of the mantra to the lowest people, just like a medicine, somebody discovers a medicine and it cures cancer, well that's a big, that's news. So the, the glories of the holy name are demonstrated not just by the, you know, the exalted pure devotee standing, but getting the most unfortunate people who have no qualification, getting them to chant, oh, look at the power of that mantra. So to give us faith, because Kalos Suddha Sambhavan, we're all fallen in this age, according to Varaha Purana. So Nitai and Haridas, they 
searched around, and they found the most fallen people in Navadweep, Jagai and Madhai. Now, I'm not going to go into details here because <laughs> it's one of the most popular skits or theaters that devotees put on at Sunday feasts, <laughs> the deliverance of Jagai and Madhai. We all know they were very fallen, and not in a comical way. They were actually very dangerous personalities. They killed people, they raped women, they drank liquor. People were afraid of them. So, actually, we know when uh, Nitai and Haridas approached Jagai and Madhai and asked them to chant Hare Krishna, uh, Madhai actually hit Lord Nityananda on the head with a pot and blood was flowing quite profusely, I was reading, in Chaitanya Bhagavan. Now, towards the end of that pastime, because Mahaprabhu came and, you know, he was going to destroy Jagai and Madhai, Nitai said, no, no, you can't do that because in, in Kali Yuga, most people are like these two guys. So then what will the purpose of your mission be? You have to deliver them. So on the request of Lord Nityananda, this is important, on the request of Lord Nityananda, Mahaprabhu agreed. We owe so much to Nitai. On the request of Lord Nityananda, Mahaprabhu said, all right, I'll, I'll accept them. And what he did is that he embraced them. Mahaprabhu embraced these two sinners. And when he did, he absorbed all their sinful reactions and his golden form, because he's known as the golden avatar, the same color of, of Shimati Radharani, because he came with that ambience for his particular purpose mentioned earlier. His body turned very darkish. And everyone there said, No! No, Nidai, no! Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, no, your, your golden form. And he said, anyone who is ever foolish enough to offend one of my devotees, now and in the future, I will give them the sinful reactions of Jagai and Madhai. He said, beware of Vaishnava Aparat. <laughs> if you perform Vaishnava Aparat, what will I give you? <laughs> 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 so sometimes we don't do things out of fear. Eventually we should do things out of love, but sometimes just out of fear, the fear of God. <laughs> I'm not going to offend a Vaishnava because <laughs> I'll get the sins of Jagai and Madhai. So afterwards, well, at then Jagai and Madhai, having received that mercy, they became actually great devotees. As bell metal can be changed into gold by a mystical process, so a very fallen and sinful person can be delivered from his fallen position by taking the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra in Diksha from a bona fide spiritual master. It's uh, Sanatana Goswami. So they changed. What's the value of religion if you don't change? You have to change. You have to become not a different person. You have to become who you really are. Devotee of Krishna. George Harrison said, everyone's a devotee of Krishna. Some realize it and some don't. <laughs> so they became pure devotees. But afterwards, Madhai he came to see Lord Nityananda and he was feeling really bad that he hit Nitai with a pot and made him bleed. So he said to Lord Nityananda, My Lord, when I think that it is you who sustains the universe in the form of Vishnu, that is by your Shakti that Brahma creates and Rudra destroys the universe, and it is you whose body I struck with the pot, the fire of penitence begins to smolder in my heart. And there's no peace for me. I think you could not have forgiven me. But please save me, my Lord. <laughs> he came back like that. <laughs> I didn't realize who you were. So then Lord Nityananda, just see how merciful. Actually, Prabhupada said that uh, Gornitai are even more merciful than Krishna. So Nitai said, Madai, you are like my own child. You're like my son. If the child strikes the father, does the father feel hurt? But if you want, <laughs> make a bathing god. And for all the people who come here to bathe in the Ganges, when they come, you wash their feet. And you chant 200,000 names of Krishna every day. That <laughs> takes like most of the day. Most of the day is chanting and washing people's feet. This is the instruction. And actually, Madai did that. And when people would come to the god, he would fall at their feet and with tears in his eyes, he would say, please all of you, kindly forgive me for my offenses. 
So now, after the deliverance of Jagai and Madhai, people came to know of the supernatural power of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and his associates, and in particular, the unlimited compassion of Lord Nityananda. And the power of chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Moving on, soon after, uh, well, sometime after, Lord Chaitanya took sannyas and he proceeded to Nilachala to Jagannath Puri. And on his way, he stopped at a, a, a village. Nitai was with him. They stopped at a village called Kamalapur. Kamalapur. It's on the bank of the Bagai River in Arissa. And when they got to that particular town, there's, a, there's a, um, uh, an ancient temple of Lord Shiva. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he went to see uh, Lord Shiva in that temple. Vaishnavadam ita shambhu. Because Shiva is the greatest devotee of Krishna. So they have a ras, they have a relationship. So <laughs> Chaitanya might say, excuse me, I'm just going to take a minute and go uh, pay my respects to Lord Shiva. And he left his danda with Nithai. A, tr- a sannyasi travels traditionally with a tridandi, like this, a pole. Like if those of you who are new here, tridandi. So he gave his danda to Nithai. So then, you know, Mahaprabhu's gone, <laughs> Nithai's, this guy is looking at this danda. And he, he's talking to the danda. Danda, you're so bold, you're so arrogant, the one whom we hold dearly in our hearts, you ride on his shoulder. Today you will have to suffer punishment for this. Like Sanyasi carries the danda like on his shoulder. So he's addressing the danda. You're so arrogant. You're, you're just, Mahaprabhu's holding you. You know, he has to hold you on his danda. He's the supreme personality. God, you should serve him. He's holding you. You'll be punished. So saying like this, Nitai, he broke the danda in three places and threw it into the river. So when Mahaprabhu came back, he said, where's my danda? So Nitai, he frowned and replied, I broke that bamboo pole. <laughs> and Mahaprabhu was shocked. And he said to Nitai, if the sannyasis, if the sannyasis danda, in the sannyasis danda reside all the demigods. It's a fact. The sannyasis danda is, there's 33 million demigods in the danda. So he said, in the sannyasis danda reside all the demigods. And you call it a bamboo pole? So Lord Nityananda said to Mahaprabhu, I know that all the demigods reside in that danda, but we cannot tolerate you having to carry the demigods on your shoulder. <laughs> the, the Mahaprabhu said to Nitai, Nitai, that danda was my only companion after taking sannyas. Now it's gone. Therefore, I'm going to Puri alone. But Vaishnav commentators, they say that it's actually the mercy it's mercy that, Lord, that Nitai broke that danda because they say, yes, there's 33 million demigods there, but in the danda of the Lord flowed prema, liquid nectar, and by breaking it, Nitai distributed that prema all over the world. <laughs> nothing, there's nothing ordinary about Krishna. It's extraordinary. So in that danda, there was prema, there was nectar. And by breaking it, the charyas say, Nitai, again, Nitai, caused that nectar to flow all over the world. Nityananda Mahajan Ki. Now, Mahaprabhu went on tour. We know that, that part of the uh, Chaitanya Charitam, he went on tour around India. And when, one day when he came back from South India, he asked Lord Nityananda to become a grihastra, to become a householder. The idea being that most of Lord Chaitanya's associates at that time were renunciates. And therefore one, therefore one might assume that in order to become Krishna conscious, one has to totally renounce the world. But let's be frank, most people can't do that. So it's a gradual progress. We're all, uh, you know, advancing. We're works in progress. So Mahaprabhu, he asked um, that... Uh, that Lord Nityananda 
um, become a householder. So as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he's the crested jewel of the sannyasis, and Lord Nityananda is the perfect example for those who are in the Grihasra Ashram. Nitai married. So because Lord Nityananda was the perfect servitor, again, of um, Lord Chaitanya, he's extremely dear to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. In fact, Chaitanya, uh, Chaitanya Charitamrita says that Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was always present in four places during his pastimes. You could say is. He's always present in, in Mother Sachi's house. He's always present in the Kirtans and the house of Srivas Pandit. He's always present in the house of Raghava Pandit. And he's present wherever Nitai is dancing. <laughs> wherever Nityananda is dancing, you can be sure that Mahaprabhu is there. So we should take every opportunity to dance in kirtan and be assured of the association of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. It was in that particular mood that the great saint Tukaram, he was a disciple of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He's from Maharashtra. So he once said, it's very pertinent about the chanting. He said one time, if you're lying down and chanting, the Lord will come and sit with you. If you're sitting and chanting, uh, the Lord will come and stand next to you. If you're standing and chanting, the Lord will come and dance with you. And if you're dancing and chanting, the Lord will embrace you. Oh. I'll, re I'll recite it again. This is Tukaram. If you're lying down and chanting, the Lord will come and sit with you. And if you're sitting and chanting, the Lord will come and stand next to you. If you're standing and chanting, the Lord will come and dance with you. And if you're dancing and chanting, He'll come and embrace you. So let's make sure in the next cure time we're all chanting and dancing and somehow the Lord will embrace us at least with his mercy. Now our Shooter Prabhupada is famous amongst even Gaudiya Vaishnavas for introducing specifically the worship of Lord Nityananda, Gornitai, in Western countries. Uh, he would often refer to the mercy of Lord Nityananda. In fact, I remember one time in New Orleans, I was told this story, that um, the temple president had kicked out some devotee, he was doing nonsense. He kicked him out of the temple just before Prabhupada's arrival. And when Prabhupada came to the temple and was in his room, that devotee climbed up the wall somehow and entered into Prabhupada's room. <laughs> and he told his, you know, side of the story to you know, Prabhupada. And Prabhupada said, you were nonsense? Yes. <laughs> so at that moment the temple president came in. And he saw that devotee, he said, you rascal, how did you get here? You're a nonsense, get out. And Prabhupada said, no. He, he said, let him stay. Because Lord Nityananda is very, very, very merciful. Viva. Like in Vedic culture, if you say something three times. So in that particular instance, Prabhupada said, just to show us the mercy of Nitai, so he, he can stay. Now anyone who's inspired <laughs> about hearing about Nityananda, they should know that the best way to worship him, the best way to serve him is by serving a Sankirtan movement. In a lecture, uh, I, I listened to this last night, and on a lecture on January 27, 1970, Prabhupada said the following, Nityananda Prabhu approached Jagai and Madhai at the risk of being personally injured and still he delivered them. The world is full of Jagai and Madhais, especially drunkards, woman hunters, meat eaters and gamblers, and we will have to approach them at the risk of insult, injury and similar other rewards. <laughs> to face such reverse conditions of life and to suffer thereby the results of actions is considered as the greatest penance and austerity in the matter of spiritual life. Now you know the common ideas, you know, that spiritual life means I and I, I do my yogic asanas, my meditation, I chant Hare Krishna, I preach, I, I live very simply, I go to the kitchen, I make a small offering, offering Om Shanti. But according <laughs> to what Baba said, out the door, <laughs> go on the street, or take some action to assist the Sankirtan movement, and then the mercy will flow, because that's the mood of Nitai. 
and know for certain that to get the the creep of the mercy of Radha Sham, we have to get the mercy of, of Nityananda. Our goal here in Vrindavan is to develop that Krishna Prema. So Srila Prabhupada went, once said that to get the mercy of Radha and Krishna, one first needs to get the mercy of Lord Chaitanya. But to get the mercy of Lord Chaitanya, one needs the mercy of Lord Nityananda, he said. Then he said, and to get the mercy of Lord Nityananda, one has to go out and preach to the Jagayan Madais. Whoa! And if you're a shy person, you can't... Okay, then just, you know, cook breakfast for the devotees or <laughs> say some prayers. But this, this is the mood. Everybody's in a... This is a missionary movement. And when the missionary spirit dries up, then I don't know what to say. So we have to share. We have to share our good fortune with others. It's always important to share. One time I was taking prasadam with uh, my dear God, Brother Bhakti Bringa Govinda Marsh, and some preparations came. I think they made, somebody made a preparation for me and I was gobbling it down and Marsh said, no, that's a nice preparation. The etiquette is you share it with everyone else. Right, Marsh? So I shared it. <laughs> the hardest lessons are the ones best learned. <laughs> so like that, we have to share our good fortune with, with others in some way or another. And in doing so, um, the Sankatam movement will continue to spread. Again, I mentioned it's meant to go for 10,000 years. And actually there's a prediction that it will happen. Whether we do it or others do it, it's going to happen. We, f we should feel privileged that we have the opportunity to serve Lord Nityananda, to serve Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, to serve the Panchatattva under Prabhupada's directions, to, to spread it because historically it will go on. I could say, quite frankly, that um, the great devotee Sarvabha Bhattacharya, he once predicted that this Sankirtan movement would go all over the world. I could say, in essence, he predicted the ISKCON movement, this International Society for Krishna Consciousness. For in his Shushloka Shatakam, Shushloka Shatakam is a book he wrote, in verse 62, it's one of my favorite verses of all time because it speaks about today. Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya, he wrote 500 years ago, from the very moment that the holy name of Hari appeared on the earth, Vaishnavas became manifest everywhere. Adorned with faultless tilak and neck beads and equipped with the Maha Mantra, in the midst of the age of Kali, they purified the atmosphere by chanting Hari Hari, so indeed, he writes, it came to pass. Shri Nityananda Mahajan ki, Shri Shri Gornitai ki, Shri Rabhubhada ki, Shri Krishna Santirtan Yagya ki, the chanting of the holy names ki, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Shri Rabhubhada ki, Oh, Pemenande! Yeah.